So the first story in uh, Saints of Bengal, it's a story of Sri Jagannath Das Babaji from Navadvi. I just wanted to say that this uh, A Saints of Raja is a book from the same author, like uh, uh, Saints of Raja, the Saints of Bengal book. And uh, here in this book are 25 stories of uh, devotees who lived in Bengal uh, during the past 200 years and pursued the line of bhakti preached by Goranga. So the first story is this story of Sri Jagannath Das Babaji. Sri Jagannath Das Babaji had a very long span of life. He lived for 147 years. He used to stay for six months in Raja and six months in Navadvip. He was known through Bengal and Raja as Siddha Purusha. Once, when he was in Navadvip, Gopinath Naya and Janakinath Raya, two self-conceited landlords of Bugyakula, went to see him. They said to him, Baba, we are told that you are a Siddha Purusha. Show us some miracle. What? Who told you that I am Siddha? As Baba said this, he tapped, tapped his stick against the ground several times. He hit with his stick on the ground several times. Let us go, Baba is angry, said the frightened landlords and began to leave. No, no, I'm not angry. I was only trying to drive away, away a she-goat who was eating up the Tulsi plant in Lokanath Goswami's Kunja in Radhakund, Baba said humbly. The landlords were surprised. How could Baba see and drive away an animal hundreds of miles away? Immediately, they sent a reply paid telegram to someone in Radhakunda to seek confirmation of the episode. The reply was that a she goat had actually eaten up the Tulsi plant in Lokanath Goswami's Kunja that day. The landlords again went to Baba and apologized for their arrogance. When they had gone, Baba said to Bihari, his disciple, poor souls of Kali, they would not believe without seeing. I showed them something so that they might not suffer on account of any offense against me. The landlords were fools to have tested Baba's accomplishment as a saint by asking him to show a miracle. Baba's Siddha state was obvious. He was himself a miracle. He was at that time 125 years old. His body was bent like a semicircle. His long brows, eyebrows hung before his eyes like curtains. 
he could hardly walk. If he had to go anywhere, his disciple Bihari had to carry him on his shoulders. Still, his stamina in bhajana was unique. He would do japa almost throughout the night. In the morning, he would perform a thousand dandavats before the deities. He would often fast continually for three days without even drinking water. He would offer tulasi leaves to Giridari with the help of his two disciples, who would stand on either side of him and lift his eyebrows with their hands to enable him to do so. In Sankirtana, he would dance and sing, and while dancing, jump up to four feet above the ground in ecstasy. The great saints do not like to exhibit their power of performing miracles, but they are sometimes compelled to do so to instill faith in skeptical minds or to relieve someone's suffering out of mercy. Jagannath Das Babaji also had to do this sometimes. Once entire Navadvip was flooded, almost everybody had to quit, but Baba did not. Bihari, who was his only attendant at that time, Fell, fell seriously ill. He was the only one who was taking care of him at that time. So he became sick. Pyari Mohanagoswami of Mahaprabhu's temple called a doctor from Kolkata. The doctor pronounced his condition as very critical. He said, the patient will die before daybreak. Lala Babu, a landlord, called his Kaviraj. He also confirmed what the doctor has said. Then Baba said, All right, I will say, see who takes Bihari away from me. He sat near his bed and began to do japa. After half an hour, Bihari opened his eyes and said, Baba, I'm very hungry. Baba immediately cooked some Mohan bog and gave it to him to eat. After he had eaten, Baba asked him to go and cook for the deity. Bihari took his bath and began to cook. Bihari was a Brajabasi. He did not know Bengali. But Baba asked him to read Chaitanya Charitamrita every day so that he might listen. He said, Baba, I do not know Bengali. But Baba asked him to purchase a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which he did. He then asked him to read, uh, to, to read. Bihari only looked vacantly at his face, confused, looking at his face. Baba said angrily, don't look at me, look at the book. Bihari be began to look at the book, and to his surprise, he found that he was able to read Chaitanya Charitamrita like one 
who had already learned Bengali and studied Charitamrita well. Similarly, Baba said to Bihari one day, Bihari, I shall sing, you accompany me on the Mridanga. Bihari said, Baba, I have never even touched a Mridanga. How can I play on it? There is no harm in trying, replied Baba. So Baba started singing, and Bihari took up the Mridanga. And lo, he was playing on it like an expert. The Siddha saints sometimes perform miracles even without knowing or willing. In the state of bhava or ecstasy brought about by stimulation of the sentiment of divine love, miracles happen automatically. Because in that state, the saint is in tune with the Lord the infinite source of inconceivable power of energy, achintya shakti, that tra transcends the law laws of nature or science. This happened in the case of Baba on numerous occasions. Once a Kirtana party passed by, the side of his cottage in Navadvip. On hearing the kirtana, Baba asked Bihari to take him near the party. Bihari at once lifted him on his shoulders and took him there. Baba laid himself prostrate before the party in obeisance. Soon after, the Kirtana song filled him with such ecstasy that he stood up and began to sing and dance with the party. He was no more the bent up old man who had to be carried by Bihari on his shoulders. He was walking along with the party and singing and dancing with them. This is interesting, uh, the part, this part, because it reminded me of uh, Pran Krishna Das Baba in Radha Kund. Like uh, when last month, uh, uh, two months ago, actually, when we went to Radha Kund, uh, we visited Pran Krishna Das Baba and he was very weak. And uh, we we're thinking that he cannot move. And just suddenly, at one moment, he jumped, literally jumped up and was quickly walking. It was total surprise. Usually they had to, they carry him around. But this time he, was, he jumped and was quickly moving, <laughs> smiling. Uh, just reminding me of him. So this... Uh, Baba, as he sang and danced, he leaped two or three feet above the ground in ecstasy and sometimes fell unconscious on the road. Since the road was under repairs and covered with small pieces of stone all over, the fall bruised his body, but he was absolutely unaware of it. When he thus fell unconscious, the devotees sang Kirtana close to his ears. Then he regained consciousness and again started walking, singing and dancing as if nothing had happened. Bhava is contagious. Baba's bhava touched the hearts of the members 
of the party like electric current and they were also lost in ecstasy so this this is good point that that bhava is contagious so true when we are in association of Vaishnavas who have power, we can feel it. We can feel it in the air, this energy. And if we stay in their association, we get a contaminated. Contaminated, yeah. <laughs> we catch that little of that power. So that's why it's so much important to be in association or like that devotees. But we can get get contaminated with Baba. <laughs> please, uh, if somebody feels to say something, please do say that it's not just me talking. Maybe somebody wants to say something on this. How Bhava is contagious. Hmm? Okay. Their movements, therefore, became slow. They took six hours to cover the distance from Baba's cottage to the banyan tree in Ranipat, where they stopped. Baba was all the time walking with them and dancing and jumping in a state of trance. Baba has practiced a long course of sadhana to attain this state. He always had stoic apathy to the world and was completely free from attachment. He would not even touch money. This, this sentence is interesting that uh, it's mentioned in many stories that these saints or these babas, they didn't even want to touch money. This, this was mentioned in, I mean, now in many stories that we read. Once Bihari was carrying him somewhere, somewhere on his shoulders. A rich man offered him a rupee. Baba asked Bihari to put it in his pocket. After Bihari had gone about a mile, Baba asked him to turn back and go again to the house of the man. He called the man and said, Please, take, ba take back your rupee. I am told you have thousands of rupees. I could not bear the bite of a single rupee. I could not bear the bite of a single rupee. I wonder how you bear the bite of so many rupees. The rupee was with Bihari, but it was biting Baba because he had touched it mentally by asking him to keep it. Baba lived like an ascetic, ascetic. His diet was strictly regulated. During the four months of the rainy season, he took in the first month only four bananas in the evening. In the second month, guavas. In the third month, Way and in the fourth month boiled banana flowers without salt.
Baba once went to Hrishikesha for Mantra Purascharana. Mantra Purascharana means continuous repetition of mantra for a specific, specified period under specified rules and regulations with the object of attaining a particular end. That means Mantra Purascharana. Bihari went with him. During Purascharana, he got up at 3 a.m., 3 in the morning, took his bath, closed the door of his room, and sat down for japa till the evening. Throughout this period, he observed silence and did not eat or drink anything. If he had to go for urination, or even if he passes gas, he stopped japa and bathed before resuming it. In the evening, he took kavishyana or boiled rice with ghee. After two months, one day, he saw a tree laden with too many fruits. He was excited and said to Bihari, Bihari, look, how many fruits on this tree? This broke his silence, and he had to restart Purascharana from the beginning. After three months, he had the darshan of Goranitai. This is how he became Siddha. He used to say that if one wanted to see Goranga Mahaprabhu or Sri Krishna in this life, he should do Urascharan. This Urascharan looks like Tapasya. <laughs> heavy but of course he said to see Sri Krishna or Goranga Mahaprabhu okay Goranga we can say double Radhika one Krishna <laughs> but we want Radhika so I think it's a little easier <laughs> Siddha saints are self-willed and fearless they live in a world of their own and do what they like, caring little for what others will say. Once when Baba was in Vrindavana, he asked a sweeper to give him, <coughs> to give him a roti to eat. The sweeper said, Why cut a joke with me, Baba? No, not a joke. I am very hungry, replied Baba. But I am a sweeper. How can you eat bread from my hand? What of that? You are a sweeper of Rindavana. A sweeper of Rindavana is superior even to Brahmins. The sweeper, the sweeper could not, could not disobey a saint like Baba. Reluctantly, he gave a roti to him and he ate. He eaten that roti. Bihari was watching this with dismay. He couldn't believe it. He said, what have you done, Baba? Society will treat you as an outcast it will be difficult for you to stay in Vrindavana. Baba only smiled. Like in any village, saying, news spread like wildfire throughout Vrindavana, that Baba had eaten a sweeper's roti. Soon came Nilamani Goswami, Radhikanath Goswami, Gora Shiromani, Gora Sundararai, and other dignitaries of Vrindavana 
in a delegation. Baba asked Bihari to give them asana to sit. They seated themselves, but kept looking at each other for some time. For no one could master courage to say anything. Baba said, I know why you are here, why you have come. Why not speak out your mind? Then they said in a submissive tone, Baba, you are the crest jewel of the entire Raja. If anyone says anything against you, we feel very much hurt. Now everybody is talking against you. Some say, Bab Baba has gone mad. Others say, if Baba defies the age-old traditions, what will happen to society? Baba replied, you are all learned people. Don't you know the importance of the Raja or dust of Vrindavana? It is so charged with Krishna Prema that even Brahma longs to be a particle of it. Is not the sweeper of Vrindavana, Vrindavana who serves the Raja or the dust and rolls and bathes in it incessantly, therefore purer than anyone else? No one could say anything further. Baba was self-willed to such an extent that at times he treated even the deities he worshipped as he liked. Once he was living in Surya Kunda in Vraja. The people of Surya Kunda had made a cottage for him. But Baba wanted to serve Goranitar. So they also made a temple for the deities. Bihari brought two beautiful murtis of Goranitai from Bengal. They were duly install installed in the temple. The deities were made of brass and glittered like gold. One night, some robbers came in while Baba was doing bhajan. They said, Baba, we are robbers. You must give us all that you possess. Baba says, said, what do I possess? I am only a servant. The masters are in the temple. You go to them. The robbers entered the temple. They were overjoyed to see the deities. They thought the deities were made of gold. So they wrapped them up in a blanket and wanted to run away. But the chief of the robbers, who was carrying the deities, struck against the top frame of the door and fell down along with the deities. Thinking that to be an ill omen, the robbers left the deities and ran away. So, sometimes it's good that, that the robbers are uh, superstitious. <laughs> Next morning, Baba asked Bihari to give away the deities to someone in Vrindavana. Bihari took the deities to Vrindavana and gave them to one Ma Goswamini of Gayesapur. At present, so today, the deities are installed in the temple of Golab Bhag in Vrindavana. They are known as Sonara or Golden, Goranga and Nitar. 
Sonara Goranga and Nita. After some time, Baba again said to Bihari, Bihari, I do not feel happy without a deity. Get me a murti of Mahaprabhu from somewhere. Bihari brought a six, six armed, six armed murti of Mahaprabhu from Dinu Babaji, a Manipuri Vaishnava, who lived in a village Mukari near Radakunda. The murti was duly installed and worshipped by Baba for 10 years. After 10 years, he said to Bihari, go and give the deity to someone in Vrindavan. So Bihari gave the deity to Baba Nityananda Das of Gopal Guru Math in Vrindavan. At present, that deity is being worshipped in a temple in the lane by the side of a boundary wall of Niduan in Vrindavan. It is difficult to say why Baba twice brought the deities and sent them away. <clears throat> Did he not commit an apparat offense by doing so? It is not proper to judge the behavior of a Siddha saint by ordinary canons of behavior, for they are above all rules and regulations laid down in the scriptures for ordinary devotees. This is also an interesting point that I know Mahabhava and me had some situations where things were happening uh, in a way that it is not understandable or it was, it was looking like not ordinary how it should be, but in the end, it was all for the benefit of some somebody, some devotee, or even us also. Like um, uh, we have situations where Mahabhava before uh, she had many. Maybe maybe Mahabhava, you can tell this story a little about your uh, uh, Shalagam Shilas from before. So I, I don't know if I, I can tell this yet. Okay. Not yet, maybe. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but anyway, it was interesting uh, how things happened and uh, it had bigger picture behind it than initially thought. So... The loving intimacy that develops between him and the deity he worships does not countenance any rules and regulations. In the game of love that goes on between the two, both are free to behave as they choose. Both play hide and seek with each other. Perhaps the two episodes narrated above are examples of hide and seek that was going on between the deities and Baba. Or perhaps the deities had done something to incur the, displa incur the displeasure of Baba. And examples are not lacking of the devotee's chastisement of the deity for his misdeed. Yashoda's chastisement of the child Krishna is very well known. The stories of chastisement of the deity by other devotees are also not uncommon. It may be that Jag Jagannath Das Babaji had ousted Goranitai from his temple. He kicked them out. 
because he thought they had invited the robbers and created disturbance in his bhajana. But what offense had the six armed Mahaprabhu committed to deserve his ousting? Baba alone knows, we don't know. The way of the saints who have realized the Lord are no less inscrutable than the ways of the Lord himself. Once Baba said to Bihari, Bihari, let us go to Navadvi. When, Baba? When? Just now. So Bihari lifted Baba on his shoulders and started for Navadvipa. As he lifted Baba, he felt like he was lifting a heavy stone. But soon after, he began to feel as he was, as he was carrying a thin piece of cloth on his shoulders. Walking all the distance on foot, Bihari reached Navadvip within nine days. Who can say whether this was due to the miraculous power of Baba or the devotion of Bihari Das to the Guru? When Bihari was passing through the forest of Bhagalapur, he suddenly stopped and began to turn back. Baba asked, What's the matter, Bihari? Bihari replied in a low voice, There is a tiger sitting in front, Baba. Baba spoke commandingly, No, no, no not, not tiger. A parshada, companion of Mahaprabhu, who had come to greet you. As he said this, the tiger looked at Baba and disappeared in the forest. The last time Baba went to Navadvip, he decided never to come back to Vrindavana. It's interesting about this tiger, we know the stories that when Mahaprabhu was traveling, Goranga was traveling there, and uh, the forest animals were dancing with him when he was singing, doing Kirtana. So, maybe one of the tigers from that era. The news, uh, so when Baba decided to never come back to Vrindavana, the news spread all over Raja that Baba was leaving Vrindavana for good. Nilamani Prabhu, Radhikanatha uh, Prabhu, and other Vaishnavas, Panditas and Brajabasis started coming to persuade him not to go. They asked him, Baba, why are you living in Davana in your old age? The question brought, brought about a sudden change in Baba. His eyes were filled with tears. His body trembled, and the hairs of the body stood on ends. <clears throat> he replied in a voice choked with emotion, I am leaving because I want to pass the last days of my life in Navadvip at the lotus feet of Goranita. I am a lowly person. I do not know how many offenses I have committed. Goranitai of Navadvi are more merciful than Krishna of Vrindavana. They condone the offenses of the jiva, give him a loving embrace, and accept him as their parshada or companion. On the way to Navadvipa, 
Baba stopped at Ambika Kalna to meet his old friend and god brother. The great saint Bhagavan Das Babaji of Kalma. The scene of their meeting was unique. Never had the persons who were present at the meeting seen such a, a scene such a scene before. On seeing each other, both the saints were so filled with joy that they clasped each other, interlocked in each other's loving embrace, they began to roll on the ground in a fit of emotion. This continued for hours. Both seemed to be in samadhi. It appeared that the samadhi would never break there was nothing unnatural about it, but because it was not a meeting between ordinary persons, but a meeting of hearts between two devotees who had realized Krishna and whose hearts were overflowing with Krishna Prema. Prema is so powerful that it makes not only the devotees, but even Krishna rock and roll and dance in ecstasy. Interesting, this is like translation from Chaitanya Sharitamrita, and it says rock and roll <laughs> translation. The disciples of the two saints, however, became very anxious. Vishnudas Baba, the foremost disciple of Bhagavan Das, said to Bihari, It is now 11 p.m. We must do something to bring them back to consciousness. Jagannath Das Babaji must be very tired and hungry after his long journey. He must have something to eat. Bihari said, Yes, Baba had not even, uh, had, had not, has not had even a morsel of food for the last three days. As he said that, he lifted Jagannandas Babaji in his lap and began to massage his chest. After some yeah. time, Baba regained consciousness. Looking at Bihari, he said, Bihari, have you taken food? How can I, Baba, until you have eaten? You have not yet taken anything, and it is now 11 o'clock at night. Night? No, no, it is evening. Everybody left. Baba stayed with Bhagavan Das Baba for 10 days and then went to Navadvip. On reaching Navadvip, on reaching Navadvip, Bihari asked, Baba, in which ashrama would you stay? Any ashrama in Navadvip would have gladly welcomed Baba. But Baba said, I will not go to any ashrama. I will stay under a tree. So he stayed under a tree. After some time, Bihari, with the help of Sri Kerdaranat Dat, Data, known as Bhaktivinoda Thakur, purchased a piece of land near the tree and built two thatched cottages on it. Uh, on it yeah. Late, later, three brick cottages were built and a boundary wall erected around them by Sri Vanamali Rai Bahadur of Tarasa. Baba lived there for 32 years. He left the body 
at the age of 147. There was a Kelly Kadamba tree in Baba's ashrama, under which he used to sit for meditation and chant Hare Krishna. After Baba's disappearance, the tree began to dry up and its bark fell off. On its naked body appeared the words Hare Krishna, which, though not very distinct, could easily be read. Four or five days before Baba left the body, he said to Bihari, Bihari, you have rendered so much service to me, but I have not yet been able to do anything for you. Today, I will give you four or five cartloads of wealth. <laughs> well said, Baba. You do not have anything except a broken Karava, pot, and you will give me cart loads of wealth. Obihari, you do not understand. I will ask Mahaprabhu and he will easily arrange. But you let me know whether you want me or wealth. I want you, not wealth, Bihari replied, replied quickly. Baba was happy to hear this. He said, very good, Bihari. By opting for me, you will have me, but not wealth. At the same time, you will not have to suffer for want of anything. You will live for a hundred years. Always chant Harinama. Kali will not be able to do any harm to you. You will be blessed with the vision of Goranita. Nothing is known about the early life of Jagannathas Babaji, except that he had taken Diksha from Sri Jagadananda Goswami of Sringaravat of Rindavana and Vaishnava Sanyas from Siddha Sri Krishna Das Babaji of Govardhan. Baba had, had a large number of disciples, some of whom became Siddha. Among his Siddha disciples, the names of the following may be mentioned. Sri Bihari Das Babaji, Sri Bhagavad Das Babaji, Sri Gaura Hari Das Babaji of Navadvi, Sri Rama Hari Das Babaji of Vrindavana, Sri Nityananda Das Babaji of Varshana, Sri Krishna Das Babaji of Kadan, Kadanba Kandi. Kadanba Kandi. Baba used to give valuable advice to the sadakas. For instance, he said, You must avoid the company of women or the company of a man who keeps the company of women, or even the company of a man who is in any way associated with the person keeping the company of women. Then, if you want to realize the supreme end, you must repeat Harinama regularly and steadfastly. Regularity is important. It should be maintained even at the cost of one's life. You should not for forget Gaura, for he is even more benevolent and merciful than Krishna. Krishna is like a just ruler who takes into account your offenses in his administration of justice. Gora does not take into account your offenses. While Krishna is interested more in dispensation of justice, 
Gora is interested more in dispensation of mercy. From this point of view, Gora Kirtana also is more useful than Krishna Kirtana. Uh, uh, Gora Kirtana is, for example, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatara Shiva Sadi Gora Vartari. Krishna is the avatar of Dvapara. Gora is the avatar of Kali. We should sing the name and the hymns of the avatar in whose age we live, just as we sing the praises of the king in whose kingdom we live. So this is the story of Sri Jagannath, Jagannath Das Babaji. One thing is here interesting. I mean, we know he's mentioning here Krishna and Gora. And Gora is also Krishna, but we know that Gora is like covered Krishna with Radhika and also Radhika in his heart, mood of Radhika. That's why Gora is different, because that is Radhika, Radhika's mood. Radhika is the one who is merciful. She doesn't take in account your offenses. That's the only difference. I mean, Gora is, because he's, in, how good they would say, in sandwich of Radhika. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, maybe somebody would like to say something if you feel it's an interesting story but no and some names are, um, are known to us who we, and some people who are mentioned like Bhakti Minutakur and some, uh, some disciples of his from Vrindavana Varshana, because we have their stories in uh, Saints of Raja. So thank you for coming. Please, uh, if you want to share something, share. I uh, also usually share the story in PDF format, format before. So if uh, there are volunteers, somebody else also can read if you want because I, I give you the PDF, so you can also read. Okay. Thank you very much. You, you say so nicely that very clear to understand, beautifully you explain everything, my dear. It's a very special pastime. So touch. Thank you. You are doing so nice job inspiring with this pastime of ma margins. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then see you next week for the ne next story. Radha, my dear Darren, wonderful. Oh, I, didn't change, I didn't change my name, Dina Daga. <laughs> <It's a, laughs> change the name. In, <laughs> Dina Daga, so nice. Thank you much. Really, Jai Sri Radha.
<laughs> and please, everyone, bless me that I can do this continually. And for your pleasure, okay, everyone. Very nice backdrop you have. I like this very much. Oh. <laughs> How you make this? Uh, actually, I'm using some special software. Ah, wow. So it's working, you know, like it's almost real, but it's not. <laughs> wow. It's not through Zoom. Zoom, it's not so good quality, you know, this backdrop. But wow, very nice. So it's a software. Wow. Yes, yes. It's free software. Really nice. You have a, a NVIDIA graphic card. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So nice, huh? <laughs> the special picture of the Sankirtan movement of Mahaprabhu. Yeah, I was thinking to put something in connection with Saints of Bengal. So. <laughs> 100%, 100%, very nice. When we see this, we see the influence of this, uh, what is behind Mahaprabhu, right? Mm -hmm. How he influenced and other signs, the whole group and how much enthusiasm is there when they are uh, singing the holy names. Yeah, and in, in here we can, in, in, in this actually, we can see uh, what was in the story about Bhava. When, yeah. Uh, because they were spreading Bhava. Yeah. And everybody was uh, contaminated. Yeah, yeah. Bhava. And who, who got Baba, he could spread it. Yes. <laughs> so it was just going. Yeah. yeah. Like an infection. Yes. They was all uh, infected. Beca getting fever. Yeah. <laughs> I think they couldn't control it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 